Okay, hi my friends. So I have a little time. I thought I'd do one more video. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, I'll g just get into it. All right, so we were uh, we stopped off at the Swedenberg um, sampler. Uh, this is about what the world of spirit is, okay? So the world of spirit is neither heaven nor hell, but a place of, of a state between the two. It is where we first arrive after death, being in due time either raised into heaven or cast into hell from it, depending upon our life in this world. The world of spirits is a place halfway between heaven and hell. It's also our own halfway state after death. I've been shown that it is a halfway place by seeing that the hells were underneath it and the heavens above it. And that it is a halfway state by learning that as long as we are in it, we are not yet in either heaven nor hell. A state of heaven for us is the union of what is good and true. And you'll notice that Swedenberg uses a lot of things in combination of each other. Good and true uh, and so forth, okay? Uh, and the state of hell is a union of what is evil and false within us. The good in a spirit person is united to the true. When the individual arrives in heaven, because as already stated in that union is heaven within us, on the other hand, when the evil is united to the false within us, then we, we arrive in hell because that union is hell within us. The process of union takes place in the world of spirits because then we are in a halfway state. It amounts to the same thing whether you stay, whether you say the union of intellect and will or the union of true and good. So you see how he uses words together all the time. Um, so first I need to say something about the union of intellect and will in its resemblance to the union of good and true because this union does take place in the world of spirits. Each of us has an intellect and a will, the intellect being open to truths and formed from them, the will being open to things that are good and formed from them, so whenever we understand and therefore think, we call it true. Whatever we intend and then for, and therefore think, we call it good. We are capable of thinking from our intellect and thus observing what is true and also what is good. But we still do not think from our will unless we intend to do it. When we intend it and do it intentionally, then it is both our intellect and our will, and therefore in us. This is because the intellect alone is not what makes a person, nor the will alone, but the intellect and the will together. That means anything that is, in, that is both intellect and will is in us, and then therefore attributed to us. Whatever is only in the intellect is associated with us, but is not in us. It is only a matter of our memory, an item of information in our memory that we can think about when we are not in a private, but, but are with other people. So it is something that we can talk and argue about, and even something that we can imitate with our affections and behavior. Our ability to think from our intellect and not from the and not at the same time from our will is provided us so that we can be reformed, for we are reformed by means of truths and truths and already noted as a matter of intellect. We are actually born into a total evil as far as our wills are concerned, wishing well to no one but ourselves. If we wish well to ourselves alone, we are delighted when harm comes to others, especially when it is to our advantage. We actually want to channel everyone else's assets to ourselves. What, rather, what, sorry, whether those assets are high rank or wealth and are happy to the extent that we succeed. To correct and reform this kind of intent, we are given the ability to understand things that are true and to use them to control the evil urges that will up from our will. This is why we can think true things from our intellect and talk about them and do them even though we cannot think them from our will until we have changed in nature so that 
on our own, that is from our heart, we intend them and do them. When we have this nature, then the things we think from our intellect are a matter of our faith, and the things that we think from our will are a matter of our love. This means that faith and love are now united within us, just as intellect and will are. To the extent that the truths of the intellect are united in good things of the will, then to the extent that we extend, therefore, do truths. We have heaven within us because we already noted that the union of good and true is heaven. However, to the extent that false elements of intellect are united to evil elements of will, we have, we have hell within us because the union of the false and the evil is hell. Still, to the extent that the truth, sorry, to the extent that the truths of intellect are not united to good elements of will, we are in the halfway state. Most of us nowadays are in a state in which we know things are true. We think about them on the basis of our information and also from our intellect. We act on either a lot of them or a few of them or none of them or act contrary to them because of our love of evil and consequent trust in what is false. So in order that we may gain either heaven or hell after death, we are taken, we are first taken to the world of spirits, which either the union of the good and the true takes place for people who are being raised into heaven, or the union of the evil and false for people who are to be cast into hell. This is because no one in heaven or in hell is allowed to have a divided mind or to understand one thing and intend something else. What we intend, we understand, and what we understand, we intend. Consequently, anyone in heaven who intends what is good understands what is true, and anyone in hell who intends what is evil understands what is false. For, so, for good people, the false elements are taken away, and they are given truths, suited and fitted to their vir virtue, while for evil people, truths are taken away, and they are given false elements, suited and fitted to their vice. This enables us to see what the world of spirits is. There is a vast number of people in the world of spirits, because that is where everyone is first gathered where everyone is examined and prepared. There is no fixed limit to our stay there. Some people barely enter it and are promptly taken, are promptly either taken up to, into heaven or cast down into hell. Some stay there for a few weeks, some for a number of years, though not more than 30. The variation in length of stay occur because of the correspondence or lack of correspondence between our deeper and our more outward natures. So then he goes to explain uh, how, how you are you know, prepared, okay? So after we die, just as soon as we arrive in the world of spirits, we're carefully sorted out by the Lord. Evil people are immediately connected with the hellish community. They're ruling love, okay? That's what they love, okay? And had affiliated them in the world, and good people are immediately connected with the heavenly community. Their love and thoughtfulness and faith had affiliated them within the world. Okay, so remember, Swedenborg loves the Bible, loves God's word, okay? And he's being shown all this. So imagine how us Christians are like, well, I thought we had to just, you know, do the secret prayer and, you know, we're in. Okay? <laughs> all right, um... Although it's good to, uh, that we, you know, at least we're, our parents or whoever, you know, got you into church, uh, started you on the path of good and, and, uh, and truth, okay? So, even we're sort, even though we're sorted out this way, we're still together in the world. We can talk to anyone when we want to, to friends, acquaintances, from our physical life, especially husbands and wives, also to brothers and sisters. And I have seen a father talking with his six sons and recognizing them. And I have seen many other people with their relatives and friends. However, since they were of different character, 
because of their life in the world, they parted company after a little while. However, people who are coming into heaven from the world of spirits and people who are coming into hell do not see each other anymore. They don't even recognize each other unless they are of like character because of the likeness in love. So they're there because of what they love. Okay. Um, the reason they see each other in the world of, of spirits but not in heaven or hell is that while they are in the world of spirits, they are brought into states like the ones they were in during their physical lives, one after another. After a while, though, they settle into a constant state that accords with their ruling love. In this state, mutual recognition comes only from similarity of love, as we explained above. A likeness unites the, and differences separate. Just as the world of spirits is a state halfway between heaven and hell within us, it is a halfway place. The hells are underneath, the heavens above. The hells are closed on the side that faces the world, accessible only through holes and crevices like those in rocks and through broad gaps that are guarded to prevent anyone from coming out without permission, which happens in cases of, of real need, as will be discussed later. Heaven is it too is bounded on all sides and the only access to any heavenly community is by a narrow way narrow is the road right uh, whose entry is also guarded these exits and entrances are what is called the doors the gates of hell and the heaven in the word okay when Swedenborg mentions the word he's talking about the Bible the world of spirits looks like a valley surrounded by mountains and cliffs with dips and rises here and there. The doors and gates to heavenly communities are visible only to people who are being readied for heaven. No one else finds them. There is an entrance to each community of, uh, from the world of spirits with a single path beyond it. But as the path climbs, it divides into several. The doors and gates to the hells are visible only to the people who are going to enter them. They open for them, and once they are open, you can see dark, sn snooty caves slant slanting down downward into the depths, where there are still more gates, rank, bow, stet, stench, breath out from them, stenches that are good spirits flee because they are repelled by them, while evil spirits are drawn towards them because they find them delightful. In fact, just as we find delight in our own evil in this world, we find delight after death in the stench that corresponds to our evil. We might compare this with the delight of the carrion birds and the beasts like crows and wolves and pigs who fly or run toward rotting corpses as soon as they get wind of them. I heard of one man who screamed aloud in utter torment at the breath of air from heaven, but was calm and happy when a breath from hell reached him. There are two doors in each of us as well, one facing hell, open to evil and false things from, he from hell, the other facing heaven and open to good and true things from heaven. The door of hell is open for people who are involved in and what is evil and its consequent falsity, although a little light from heaven flows in through the cracks, which enables us to think, reason, and talk. On the other hand, the door of heaven is open for people who are focused on what is good and therefore on what is true. There are actually two paths that lead to our, our rational mind, one from above or within, through which the good and the true enter from the Lord, and one from below or outside, through which the evil and false inf infiltrate from hell. Oh, I have to go. Okay, love you. Bye.